Welcome, I'm Jordia Benjamin, Merkin Senior Coordinator of Programs and Audience Engagement at Colby College Museum of Art in Waterville, Maine. This is Artful Healing. Artful Healing is a part of the museum's wellness initiative under the larger program, Let Art Inspire. Our theme for the month has been Time to Celebrate, inspired by the work of Zanel Maholi, Namla One at Castle House. We have viewed this work through the lens of yoga, meditation, and today we're here with healing, a creative hands-on experience. Now before we begin the activity portion of this program, let's first take a look at this work. Zanel Maholi is a South African visual activist working in photography, video, installation, and currently painting. Maholi's work looks at the Black resistance, existence, as well as insistence, focusing exclusively on Black LGBTQIA and gender non-conforming individuals to ensure this community exists in the visual archive. Maholi uses the pronouns they and them and explains that they identify as a human being. Zanel Maholi, Namla 1, Kassil House, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, 2016, is a part of the Zoyama Goyama series, which is Zulu for Hail the Black Lioness. Zoyama is their response to a number of ongoing racism and politics of exclusion. These portraits of self speaks to occupying public spaces to which Black communities have been denied access. Zoyama is not only an archive of beautiful photographs, but as a means to bring forth political statements and affirmations. Maholi faces and phases that they conjure not only bear witness to their own experience, but also the persistence and insistence on making a claim for humanity. The majority of the photographs in Zoyama Goyama are based on personal experiences, archiving their travels in America, Europe, and Africa. In Namla, Maholi is archiving their experience in North Carolina. Engaging with the language of theater, Maholi interprets various characters and archetypes using wigs, outfits, and props that speak to their presumed cultural identity as an African. By enhancing their dark skin and sometimes lightening their lips, they have enhanced their physical features in an assertion of their black identity, forcing the viewer to question their role in gazing at them along with emphasizing the literal sense of contrast. Now, let's turn it over to our partner, Bodhi Simpson, a licensed art therapist who will lead us in this program. Hello everyone and welcome to Artful Healing. My name is Bodhi Simpson and I'm an art therapist. As an art therapist, one of my roles is to assist people in bringing in new awarenesses and new perspectives into their lives so they can rise above their challenges and see the larger picture. The art that we create can become a visual meditation that truly allows us to bring in new perspectives and new awarenesses. Today I'm going to be guiding you in a creative practice called Celebration Weaving. I'm going to teach you how to use the creative process to really bring your attention to what it is you'd like to be celebrating and then learn how to consciously weave these new perspectives together. Today's practice also reminds us of the importance of creating space not only to celebrate ourselves and the unique gifts that we have to offer the world, but also to celebrate all of life and everything that we're grateful for. Before we begin today, let's just take a moment, put your feet flat on the floor, place your hands over your heart space, and we're just gonna take a few deep breaths in and out together. And what we're doing is really taking a moment to open our hearts to the experience of celebration and all that it has to offer us. 
Today's offer is not a substitute for therapy. If something comes up for you that's in need of deeper healing, please seek the support of a compassionate friend, family member, or therapist. And because today's offering is recorded, please feel free to pause the video at any time and then resume the video when you're ready to continue in your creative practices. To prepare, it's important that you find a safe, quiet space where you can create and possibly leave your creation out as you finish it over time. Consider setting up a sanctuary at home that you visit each time you engage in your creative meditative practices. This would be a place where you can relax and focus, where you silence your cell phone, and be sure that you'll be uninterrupted for at least the next 30 minutes. While you're creating, trust what feels right for you. There's no right or wrong in this process. You may end with a creation that you're proud of and that you would like to hang in your space, but it's most important to remember that the process and the experience while creating is most important. Allow yourself to let go of how this should look and allow it to come together and take shape as you follow your own sense of beauty. I'm gonna ask now that you mindfully gather your materials. Today's recommended materials are eight and a half by 11 or 11 by 14 watercolor paper, watercolor paints, a paintbrush, a cup of water, a paper towel, acrylic paints. Today I'm recommending white, yellow, and gold, a roll of masking tape, scissors or a paper cutter, a pencil, and Elmer's or craft glue. Remember that you can modify the materials to fit what you have at home or choose other materials that may inspire you. Next, you're gonna take out your watercolor paper and your pencil. You'll be covering this paper with all that you would like to celebrate. It doesn't matter if what you write is legible or in straight lines. The most important is that what you write is from your heart. As you write, you might consider what do I appreciate about myself? What are my strengths? What gifts do I offer the world? What makes me special and unique? What gives my life meaning and purpose? I'm gonna ask that when you do write these, you write them as though they are mantras or positive affirmations. And you can practice feeling them as you write. So you might write something like, um, I celebrate my strength. Or you might write something like, I am loved. Sometimes it can be hard to think about what strengths you have or what's good about you. So um, it can be helpful to imagine what strengths you would like to grow into. And as you write them out, just imagine that you are already feeling these things. So if you want to feel confident, for instance, but you don't feel that you are confident, you could write something like, I celebrate my confidence. And you could practice feeling that or holding the possibility that that could be something you could be feeling as you're writing it. And um, you can also expand and begin to add other gratitudes such as what excites you. You know, really thinking about what do you most appreciate and joy about life? And where do you find beauty and joy? And also who do you love and who do you appreciate? Really, what do you most appreciate about life? And it could be the simple things like, lately I've been thinking about celebrating the light of the rising sun on the horizon. And today I was celebrating the sound of the birds singing so sweetly outside my window. I 
Again, it's okay if this is not legible. We're actually going to transform it in a few moments. The most important thing is that this page becomes a container where you're able to really bring your attention and focus to what it is you truly celebrate about yourself and about life. And allow yourself enough time for this practice. So for today, this may be enough, really making space to engage in this part. And you may engage in the next part tomorrow or next week. Um, so really allow yourself to give yourself as much time as you need to really be clear about what you appreciate, what you're grateful for, and what you celebrate about yourself and about life in general. And the next step is when you're done, when you've covered your entire page, no matter what size it is, you're going to put your pencil down and you're going to pull out your paper cutter or your scissors. And what you're going to do is you're going to be cutting the page into equal strips. And it's okay if these aren't exactly equal. Um, I cut mine by hand and it came out just fine. cut your paper into strips, really allowing this in itself to be a mindfulness practice and really breathing into um, the possibility of weaving in new perspectives in your life. And once you have completed cutting your entire page, what you're going to do next is you are going to lay out your strips. And what I'm doing is I chose to use nine strips horizontally and I'm going to use nine strips vertically. You can really decide how many you would like to use. And as you can see, the words are not legible but I know that my paper is really infused with all of this goodness, all of this love and appreciation and gratitude. And once you've laid out about half of your strips or however many you'd like to use, you're gonna get out your masking tape and you're just gonna tape down the top. And it's okay if there's some spaces, you know, this doesn't have to be perfect. It's up to you, you know, how much time and detail you take to getting this the way that you like it. And so what you're gonna do is once you have this taped, is you're gonna take the other strips that you have and you're gonna begin to weave in. And as you're weaving, again, just bringing mindfulness and awareness to celebrating. And what you do is you go over and under every other strip of paper and then move it up. And then when you bring your next strip, you do the opposite. So you go over that strip and under the next one. And I'm finding that weaving is a really wonderful meditative practice. Just going over and under and practicing my breath. There's really no need to rush this. You can really just enjoy weaving in all these celebrations.
There. And once you have pretty much completed, um, you know, as far as you'd like to, then you can take out your Elmer's or your craft glue and you can just put a little dab of glue on the four corners just to really hold it together. You can take off your tape. did for mine is I chose to um, I chose to cut about an inch out on the edges and as I did this it kind of reminded me of a sunshine and the little beams coming off the edges but again feel free to cut yours into whatever length or shape feels right for you Okay, and so for yours, if you're doing this at home on your table, you'll probably want to put a piece of paper underneath. And then what you're going to do is you're going to get out your cup of water, your watercolors, your paper towel. And at this point, you can wet your colors that really resonate for you with celebration so there's no right or wrong colors um, it's truly whatever feels like celebration to you and for me I'm really focusing on the warm yellows and oranges of the Sun today um, so I'm going to be using those colors but but what I'd like you to do is again practicing breathing in these vibrant colors of celebration as you're bringing this new tapestry, this new perspective to life, really bringing in the light and illuminating. And it's okay if there's spots that aren't covered fun with it and be playful. Once you have covered your weaving in the way that feels right with the colors that really illuminate and bring all that you celebrate to life, what I'd like you to do is allow this to dry. So you're gonna put this aside. And once this has dried, so again, this might be another day or maybe you take a little time um, in a half an hour to come back to this is I took the white paint and again I got out paper towel and water and using my white paint as gesso I painted a white sunshine over this to start to create a space to paint on and once I painted the white I let that dry and that's when I got out my golds and my yellows and I really embellished my sunshine with vibrant, bright acrylic paints. 
And I really was inspired to also mention that, you know, you could use glitter, you could use gems, really allow yourself to um, bring this sense of celebration and illumination to your weaving in whatever way feels right. And this is my finished weaving. So you can get the sense of where I'm guiding you. But if a sunshine doesn't feel like the right symbol for you, feel free to use whatever symbol represents celebration to you and authenticity and, um, and joy and happiness. Before today, when's the last time you created space to celebrate yourself and to celebrate life? It's important to create space to celebrate yourself because this allows you to increase your self-confidence and to bring in self-acceptance and to empower yourself. And what happens is you end up illuminating others to be proud of who they are and to increase their self-confidence. Your celebration weaving can be used in a way that you can look at this creation and you can remember to shine your inner light brightly and to illuminate the world and unleash your radiance. And when you're working with your celebration weaving, it can also just be that visual reminder to really make space to celebrate, to celebrate who you are authentically, to celebrate all the little things that you appreciate about life and to notice the beauty around you and to notice the beauty within you. I thank you all so much for joining us for this Artful Healing experience, and I look forward to creating with you again on the third Monday of next month. I'll see you then. I hope you have enjoyed today's program, and I invite you to follow us on all of our social media accounts at Colby Museum and visit us on our website, colby.edu forward slash museum to stay updated on all of our upcoming events, programs, and so much more. And like always, from our museum home to yours, take care and I'll see you next month.